Thursday, September 24, 1959. For nearly two years now on Space Report, I've been giving you details on that enigma of the age, the unidentified flying object. Like the UFO that hung over Redmond, Oregon for at least two hours early this September morning. Point it out to us. Yes, it was right off in this direction, right out east of Redmond on the Prineville Highway. Uh, it came close to the ground and it stopped. And at that time I pulled over to the side of the road and stopped the car and watched it. Well, I'd say it was a, a round gold object that I knew it wasn't a star because it was too large. It just shot real fast to the east. Yes, do you, uh, do you believe in the uh, possibility of flying saucers? I believe in possibility of almost anything in the sky these days. You know, there's so many things that come to pass, and uh, the government puts so many things up in the air. That the thing seen over Redmond might have been a real machine under intelligent control from somewhere in outer space has been pointed up quite dramatically by the instituting of a new and systematic search for intelligent life on other worlds. Dr. Frank Drake, who heads the project, states flatly that he expects to receive intelligent radio signals from planets of other suns. As Dr. Drake puts it, there's someone out there. We're not alone. Hey, what is up guys? Tyler here with Secure Team, and I wanted to start today's video with a piece of vintage footage from all the way back in the 1950s. A piece of footage that is extremely important for two separate reasons. The first reason, well, was just to show you guys once again just how far back and widespread the UFO phenomena goes. And that this isn't just some new fringe topic that has popped up on the internet gaining popularity with, uh, you know, YouTubers and people. This has been a phenomenon that has been going on well before the 1950s, hundreds, thousands of years back. And, well, the second reason that this footage is important is, well, because it goes to a new finding. Now, if you remember, uh, in my most recent or second to most recent video, we were talking about how Canada was found to be um, one of the, or if not the number one hotspot for UFO activity in the world. And today, we're following that video with another finding here in the United States, where it has been discovered through data of UFO sightings going back years, including these particular sightings that were shown in this vintage footage, that the state of Oregon is among the top states for UFO sightings in the entire U.S. Who would have thought Oregon? And these sightings go back uh, to name a few. Uh, there was one in 1947 where a private pilot by the name of Kenneth Arnold reported seeing nine saucer-like aircraft flying in formation between Mount Rainier and Mount Adams in Washington where he estimated the objects to have been traveling at around 1,200 miles per hour. Then we have one of the most famous reports of a UFO happened in McMinnville in 1950 at around 7.30 p.m., where a couple of farmers by the name of Evelyn and Paul Trent spotted a disc-shaped object hovering in the sky, where they then grabbed a camera and took these now historic and much debated photographs of the object. Finally, and as you saw in the footage, we have a 1959 sighting where a police officer by the name of Robert Dickerson was driving through the streets of Redmond, Oregon, when he saw a large bright object descend over the city, stopping abruptly and hovering at around 200 feet. And where even an administrator at the Redmond Airport also witnessed the event and filed an official report with the FAA, which you're seeing here. And with all of the strange sightings, mystery sounds, crop circles appearing throughout the years, there has begun to form a documented history of unexplained activity happening in the Pacific Northwest. Which, by the way, is all around the same area of some certain states where we have more UFO activity than anywhere else, such as Nevada, obviously, uh, you know, the locations of Area 51, Utah, the location of Skinwalker Ranch, and now Oregon. And so I, I think it's certainly safe to say that in these particular states that connect with one another in this perfect sort of diagonal line, Utah, Arizona, New Mexico, 
some of the biggest states for strange and unexplained activity, as well as the secretive government bases, where we know that some very secret and out-of-this-world things have been taking place over the years. And with these new findings, I'd like to pass the question to you guys. Any of you from Oregon or the surrounding areas, have you experienced your own bit of strangeness? I'd really like to hear some stories from people living uh, in the state of Oregon and in the surrounding areas and see if we can put, you know, some more pieces to the puzzle together. But, you know, if, if you've watched my videos this past year, we've done a number of really just jaw-dropping stories. One off the top of my head, if you remember, we reported, uh, did a couple of videos about an incident that occurred in 2004, I believe, where a couple of jets, a couple of F-15s, were actually scrambled to track a fast-moving UFO caught on radar moving at a very high speed, which then led to a series of eyewitness accounts made by nearby airline pilots who were traveling northward over Oregon at the time. These uh, jets were scrambled to intercept the mysterious object, which then quickly became invisible to radar and disappeared just before the jets could reach the unknown object. And so we did an entire video based on that sighting. I'll put it down below as well as the article from the website that broke the story, uh, which featured actual recordings, FAA recordings of the interaction with the pilots who witnessed the object to the jets that were tracking it. It's just a bizarre head scratcher of a sighting. And uh, once again, happened over Oregon. So tell me what you guys think. Is there something specific about this state? Or is it all these states that line up one next to the other, all leading back down to Nevada and New Mexico, you know, the hubs for mysterious black sites and bases where many of these unearthly things have been seen flying and or being tested in the area? Put it down below and tell me what you guys think. Now, speaking of UFO sightings, uh, things sighted uh, by passengers of airplanes, no less, here we have a new piece of footage that was sent in to me by a viewer who was on a flight over Saudi Arabia. And the footage here, it's a little grainy because it looks like we have some dirt on the window and, you know, it's just a little overexposed. So I'm going to bring up the contrast a bit. But in this footage, which unfortunately doesn't have any audio, you will notice what appears to be, and according to the viewer, what looks like a disc of some sort just sitting in the clouds, slowly moving, locked into place for a while before, you know, sort of drifting over to the left. And at other points, uh, we can see some smaller white objects passing by. So here is that footage. And again, I want you to notice this sort of dark disc shaped object sitting back here in the clouds where I am uh, circling. Okay, so, um, if you didn't see it the first time good enough, here you're seeing some zoomed-in shots, image stabilized, where the object in question, we're trying to keep, you know, more towards the center of the screen, but it appears as the dark, sort of flat disc or frisbee shape sitting amongst this white bank of clouds here. And at certain points in the footage, you can see where the sunlight is hitting the, the reflective top of this object, and the bottom of the object is in darkness. It's in shadow because the sun isn't hitting it. You can see, likewise, the tops of the clouds that are being hit by the sun underneath in shadow. So, and another thing you can definitely see this object is sitting in front of these clouds. And it just sits there. And at times, you get a really good shot uh, of the shape of this thing, which uh, again appears to be a disc, like a flat disc, or perhaps even a cigar-shaped object. I just don't know. I wish we had higher resolution footage, but this is the best we have, still definitely showing us something sitting up amongst the clouds. And again, as I said earlier, at one point in the video, and remember, this is about 30, 40,000 feet here, we see a white object come into frame sort of flying towards and underneath this object in the background, just passes by. Um, you know, it doesn't 
seem to make any erratic movements. I'm not sure if this is a bird. Again, they're extremely high up. Not too many birds fly at 30, 40,000 feet. And as you're seeing again, the object, it's by itself. You know, I don't see any indication of wings flapping or anything like that. And at this distance, I mean, I, I highly doubt we would even see a bird at this far away. So the object, in my opinion, could be much larger. So yeah, two unexplained things in this footage over Saudi Arabia. You guys tell me what you think down below. And lastly, before we go today, real quick, I just wanted to show you something very cool, which is this animation here of actual satellite imagery showing the planet Mars completely engulfed in a massive sandstorm. And so starting at the end of June, there was this, what they're calling an epic, or massive, which is a word I like, dust storm on Mars that covered about one-fourth of the planet, and then just a week later had grown into a global weather event, completely enveloping the entire planet, with the dust even knocking out NASA's Opportunity rover, completely knocked it offline. And according to NASA, this Martian dust storm has grown in size and is now officially a, quote, planet encircling or global dust event. And apparently this is extremely rare, whereas the last dust storm on Mars to go global occurred in 2007. And every time, and as always, it's, it's, it's always an amazing sight to see. So with that... Thank you guys for stopping by. That is all I have today. Be sure to stay tuned. Follow me on Twitter and uh, Facebook where I constantly post updates and uh, little tidbits of info I didn't include in videos. Links are down below. You guys enjoy the rest of your day or night depending on where you are and I will see you all back.